Yeah, so we're gonna dive right into this. Art isn't something where if you don't get first place, then what you're doing isn't meaningful. And that's good. <laughs> it's also about becoming a complete person. Hi everyone, welcome to the Spotlight Academy with me, your host, Jerry Gale. Today, we are gonna focus on classical instrumental. I have been asking our students what subjects they're really, really interested, what do they wanna know about, and once again, we can have some really, really great topics and things we're gonna talk about today. My guest today is Tim Calobre, who is a Spotlight alum, and I'm really excited about that, as well as you know, just who he is as a person and as a professional. Tim received his degree from the USC Thornton School of Music. He is a classical guitarist and pianist, the producer and composer. Tim's music has been performed by notable ensembles like the LA Philharmonic. He has scored multiple film features as well as a variety of television and commercial projects. So Tim, I'm so excited and so happy and grateful that you would be a part of this and be here with us today. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. It's so great to be with you guys. Yeah, so we're going to dive right into this. Did you do any competitions? I mean, I know you did competitions in the United States, but did you ever do any competitions internationally? I didn't do any competitions in other countries. I did do a few international competitions, but based in, in the U.S. Did you like doing them? Did you not like doing them? I did like, I, I definitely did like doing them. And I think that they're, they're definitely a very important thing for a musician and I'm sure for other types of artists as well. One thing that it gives you is just kind of validation that you are in fact doing well here and that what you're doing is, is, is working. It's kind of the only metric that you really have where you can kind of see how, how you're doing. And I think that that's really valuable and it was, Definitely something that was really encouraging for me. It's also something just to work towards. It's a big goal that you prepare for and you have the experience of performing and, and also just dealing with performing under pressure, which is something that, of course, performers uh, need to be familiar with and, and used to doing. It's a very valuable experience. It helps you just know that you're on the right track, really. Did you ever feel like if you didn't win something or you came in at a, at a, a placement that we didn't wasn't didn't make you feel good about yourself like what kinds of things do you say to yourself what did you how did you get through those moments recognize that the competition of course is a competition and, and does have rankings art really isn't about that in the, in the bigger sense and that competitions serve a very important uh, purpose but that ultimately it's not art isn't something where if you don't get first place then what you're doing isn't meaningful and i think it's really important to remember that and to remember that these things are subjective as well and that just seeing it more as these are a bunch of artists who are all just doing amazing things and we're all just showing up and we're going to do our best and and get the most out of it and i think that it's great if you if you do that did you ever have friends that you were competing against and did that interfere with your friendships how did you deal with that because i think that's a really important thing Definitely, yeah. I mean, I definitely had some friends who, who I did compete against, but I guess it never really, luckily it never really became a personal thing where, where there was there were any hard feelings on anyone's, anyone's side. And I think, I think that that's usually been the case in my experience, that most people really do have a good outlook on the whole process, and everyone generally seems to just be excited to be there. And I think that that's, that's great. That's how, that's how it should be. I'm wondering if any parents are watching this, but... Did you feel like your parents were sort of like pushing you and or is this something you really want to do and how did you deal with your parents, you know, things yeah, like that? Yeah, I think parents are a very interesting subject. I mean, my, my mom especially was, was so instrumental and, and really crucial to me working as hard as I, I did when I was a kid. I think that most kids don't, or most people even maybe, don't just out of nowhere have an incredible sense of work ethic and drive and discipline. And my mom instilled that in me and she would sit with me every day as I was practicing. And she would sit in my lessons when I would have guitar and piano lessons and she would bring a journal and she would take notes on everything that the, the teacher said. And then when I was sitting and practicing, she would be reading the journal and making sure that I was incorporating every single note. So she was incredibly methodical about it. But did that bug you? No, it didn't. I mean, you know, there were definitely times as a kid when I, I would have rather been doing something else. But of course, 
That's just how working hard is. It's not always fun, but I'm so grateful to have learned that kind of discipline. And I think that that level of discipline and that work ethic has really paid off in my entire life, not just within music, but just, I think that the principle of discipline and hard work and work ethic and being meticulous is the same no matter what you're doing. And so that's really just helped me through my life. And so I think that that's, you know, if, if you have a parent who's hard on you, and, and but in a good way, and, and being a force of discipline, that's a very, very valuable thing. That's right. We want to thank our parents. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm curious if after graduating high school and going to college, if your kind of your path changed or what you thought was going to be your path because i think that we all especially when we're young you know 14 13 14 15 16 years old 17 we have like an idea of what we're going to do and then you get into college and did that path change for you and what how did that come about yeah so i mean when when i was in in high school i was playing classical guitar performing a lot i was also playing piano and i was also writing music and interested in the idea of film scoring and TV music. So that's a lot of different things and I didn't really know where I wanted to end up specifically and I was just kind of going ahead with all of them and so when I when I went to USC I applied to all three majors, uh, guitar, piano, and composition and I was for about a week I was like a triple major and then I quickly realized that that's just not that wasn't going to happen, you know, so I, I immediately dropped uh, piano, which I felt was the right decision for me. And so then I was a classical guitar and composition major for most of my time. And then I ultimately ended up focusing on composition in my last year and graduating that way. So it was really just a process of me finding what resonated with me, what made sense for me. And I, I think that that's a really important thing for everyone to do is to create the space in your life for the answers to come to you. I think that these kinds of answers you can't really force them when you're trying to find a path that is the truest for you and the best for you. It's not something that you can just sit down in the afternoon and just kind of grind out. I think it comes from life experience and comes from the ups and downs of doing something for a long time. And then I think at a certain point, the way forward just becomes clear. And for me, over time, it was realizing that I was just more excited about the idea of being a a composer and working in film and TV. Um, That was something I was always interested in and and I loved playing classical guitar as well and performing and I I really, I miss performing in some ways because I pretty much don't perform anymore now as a composer, but it was the right thing for me and I think there was just, there just came a time when I knew that that was who I was. I'm just curious, what is it about composing that you love so much? Like when did that like, did you go to movies and hear film scores and went, I, I want to do that? Or like, how did that happen? Yeah, I mean, that always happened for me, even from an early age, just John Williams' music, which I think everyone loves so much, just was so unbelievably powerful and emotional that I just, I, it always just hit me so hard. Composition is a little bit different, or painting or something, for example, where once you put in the effort, it's there and it's set in stone and it lives forever. And I thought that that was an interesting idea that that there was a bit more of a sense of permanence with uh, your work. But of course, that's no reason not to be a performer as well. And and, and I, again, I I really do miss kind of the thrill and just the the joy of performing. It's one of the most incredible things just to interact with an audience and be in the moment with so many people. It's a beautiful thing. But again, I think it just comes down to personal preference and just what what calls you. And, And I think the composition was just what was calling me at the time that I made that decision to go in that direction. Were your parents like really supportive of you kind of changing direction? Were they disappointed? And I mean, I think that's like a big thing for especially instrumentalists. I think parents, I don't know. I'm just like, I'm assuming, you know, it's like you start, you start playing an instrument and the natural path is performance. And I think that parents and or teachers think, well, then that's what the trajectory, that's what the career will be. Was it a challenge for your parents? Yeah, that's that's a great question. It, it wasn't at all. And they were very, very supportive. And I think they knew that I had been writing music pretty much as long as I had been playing anyways. Um, I think I, I started playing piano when I was about six years old. And I think that I wrote my first piece at that age as well. So it's huh. It's something that I've kind of been doing, and so they were totally supportive of it. But that definitely could be a difficult thing for someone if their parents are seeing things differently. But I would have to say that I think that when you when you have that internal voice and you know what is the right thing for you to do, you have to do that. And sometimes other it may not be the popular thing among other people, but I think ultimately you have to 
live your life for you and, and for your own truth. And, and that can be very difficult sometimes. Not even just parents or peers, but also just self-doubt can be a big difficulty when you're kind of turning a page and going in a different direction. There's a lot of uncertainty in that. And I think that that's something that everyone faces at some point or another, whether it's getting a different job or getting into or out of a relationship or something. But I think that you kind of have to trust in your instincts and have faith that it's going to work out and just go in that direction and just believe in it. And at a certain point, just when you've made your decision, there's no point in looking back and you just kind of have to go for it. And have you ever had moments like over the last, I don't know, five years, maybe longer, eight years, where you have just like been saturated and you thought, I, I just need to take a break. I don't want to play right now. And, or like, I want to give up. So like those moments of self-doubt or just like, yeah. I don't know, like, how do you deal with that? Yeah, that's another great, great question. I think that those moments definitely do exist. I think especially being a composer and working for TV and film deadlines, it, it, it's a very, it's, it's a, you know, it's a very intense job and can be very stressful. I definitely have moments like that. And I think, again, for me, my answer is, is just to trust my intuition. I guess internally, when you kind of listen to what your deeper self is saying, you'll kind of know whether it's one of these times when you just need to like grind through it and keep going, or if it's one of those times when you need to slow down and take care of yourself and do other things and take some time away or something. But for me, it's it's always just about getting to that place of, of stillness, of, of knowing what is the right thing to do here. What do you love about the work that you do now? Well, there are a few things. One, one is that I, I really like just being able to be in a studio or be at home and work. For me, that just works really well. And I think that was also one of the challenges that I found about performing was just going to other places and especially traveling. And I love traveling, but just, it could just be challenging when you have to go somewhere and your sleep schedule is messed up and you just have to bring your A game, you know? So I like just being able to be in one place. For me, that's just been really helpful and great. I also just like how endlessly challenging it is. Composing is, is difficult, but also just this kind of scoring also involves producing, which is really an entirely different skill set and one that I just didn't have at all before. So it's something that I'm still learning and there are just so many details that you can get into in terms of the composition that you're writing and the mood of that in a more traditional compositional sense. But then also all the production things about how to make these sounds sound as good as possible and creating different sounds and using synthesizers or playing electric guitar or playing electric bass or you know you could you can also just create sounds by tapping on a table with a microphone right there and, and create really interesting stuff and a lot of great composers do that kind of thing so it's kind of about endless experimentation i really get this sense that it will take me a lifetime to become a true master at this and that's really exciting actually because i guess you don't really want the sense that you've just about figured this thing out and then you're just going to kind of throwing it in and just keep doing the same thing over and over again for the rest of your life. So I, I really love the challenge. I meant to ask this before, like I know there's a lot more when you're performing, so I kind of wanted to ask you about when you were younger and when you were performing, how did you deal with nerves? I mean, I remember you, you know, when you played at the Amundsen and, you know, was in front of 2000 people and, and we do a lot of preparation, but like, what are things that you do before when you were performing? What did you do to help yourself get over those nerves? That's a really good question and I, I wish I had a better answer. I'm so glad I'm giving you good questions. <laughs> you really are. I, I wish I had a better answer because it's it's interesting. When I was young and I, I started performing, I think when I was nine or so, I was my first you know, little performance and I kept performing from there. But I just never really had much of an issue with nerves. And I, I wish I knew why that was, but I don't. And I actually started to have more issues with that in college as I was performing. I just kind of started for the first time getting a bit more nervous and having my hands start to shake a little bit, which is, even if your hand is shaking a tiny bit, as you can imagine, if you're playing an instrument, it, it is a real problem. I wish I had an answer for what I was doing differently back then. I really don't know. I think that right now my approach would be meditation and really just, I'm really focused on like life practices that just make you feel better and that reduce anxiety. I think that meditation is really a big part of that. I think that yoga can be really helpful. Anything that's sort of a spiritual practice, and that can be 
dance, it can be music, it can be cooking or something. It doesn't need to be prayer or sitting in meditation in the traditional sense. But just doing these things and getting in habits, getting into a routine of connecting with your higher self, I guess you could say. Those are the things that I think I've learned have helped me to calm down. And it's interesting because I think as a composer, you never have like stage fright type nervousness, obviously, because nothing's really happening in the moment. But there's a lot of kind of longer term stress. For instance, I was, I was recently working on a film that I was working on for over a year, and I was working on other projects at the same time, and it was just an enormous amount of work, and I started to just get very uh, anxious just about how much there was to do, and I was just working every single, every single day. I mean, over the weekends, I would just morning to night be working, and I, I just really had no life, and it was pretty intense. But again, I think my way out of that was just putting aside time for these kind of spiritual practices and yoga, things like that. And also just having a mentality of gratefulness too, I think. I think that I really do believe now that gratefulness is kind of the antidote to things like anxiety or frustration or dissatisfaction. I think that just remembering, just choosing to be excited and happy with what you have really makes all the difference. It doesn't even really matter what your actual circumstances are. It's just about how you perceive them. So I think it's just remembering to be grateful for what you have, remembering to be choosing really just to be excited and passionate about what you're doing. It really is just a choice. I agree 100%. That was so well said. I'm curious if looking back, again, I don't know. I'm, I'm asking this question because I'm, I'm really fascinated by this. I think that we end up when we're younger being really focused on what we're doing. So for me as a ballet dancer, it was just completely focused on ballet. Do you wish that you would have had explored different kinds of music or maybe you were exploring it then or that would have informed what you're doing now better? Yeah, and I, I definitely did a bit of that and I continue to I think do that more and more, just playing different types of guitar and trying to learn different instruments. I think that that is a very important thing. I think that as an artist, your work is kind of, it's a representation of the totality of your being. And so I think that if you're, if you're too limited and if you just play classical guitar like I did, for example, and if that was all that you did and kind of all that you listened to and all that you focused on, that's great. But I think that there's going to be kind of a limit to your worldview and your ability to express other things. So I think that if you become a person who just has had a lot of experiences, then you kind of have more to say through your art. And I think that just travel would be a big part of that too. And that's something I want to do more of. I mean, I have some friends who have been to so many places around the world and it's, I don't know if you've experienced this, but these kinds of people are just different in a way. They're just kind of wiser. They've kind of been in more unusual circumstances that people in America don't normally deal with and things like that. And I think that that's part of being an artist is, is not just, it's not just about the discipline of, of working hard at your craft, but it's also about becoming a complete person who has experienced a lot, who knows a lot, and who's seen a lot. And then that will just, that will express itself naturally through what you do. What other kinds of music, like are there any groups or mu music that you love to listen to in addition to classical? Like what else do you love to listen to? Yeah, I've always just loved like acoustic music, anything with like steel string guitar and like mandolin, even like banjo. I just really love that stuff for some reason. Like Sufjan Stevens is someone who I've been a big fan of my whole life. I really listen to all kinds of stuff. I listen to hip hop, I listen to jazz and, and still classical too. I mean, classical music is really great. It's been kind of nice to rediscover it after, you know, when you're in school and when you're learning, you almost feel this obligation to listen to classical music, for example. But then when you're no longer obligated to do that, and then you kind of rediscover certain things on your own terms, it's really great. I'll pretty much listen to anything as long as I think it's well done. Okay, my last question is, if little Tim was, was standing next to you right now, you know, your 15, 16 year old self, like what advice would you now as an adult looking back, like what would you give, what advice would you give yourself at that yeah. point? Yeah, so again, kind of, I already kind of spoke about these things before, but I think a big thing in my life has just been spiritual practices and just meditation, just whatever you can do to just slow down a bit and 
get to a place of stillness, I think that's absolutely crucial. And I think it, it's becoming more and more difficult with the fact that we've got a phone on us all the time. And that when you look around and you're in line in a store or something, everyone is on their phone when they have a spare moment. And what that means is that we don't have any time really to just be and to just be receptive and listening. And I think that that's a very important state to be in. And I feel like that's really where all of my answers that I've ever been looking for have come from, is, is that place. Another thing that I think has been really important for me is, and this goes back to what I was saying about how my mom really taught me how to work and how to practice and everything. I think that it's very important to be almost scientific in your methods for learning. And again, I think it doesn't really matter what you're learning. It can be an instrument, it can be a subject, an academic subject, it can be whatever. But I think that the principles of learning are always kind of the same. And I think that it's very important to become really good at learning. For me, what that means is kind of deconstructing something into different variables and then changing one variable at a time and seeing what happens while keeping all the other variables constant and then changing the next variable. So being almost like a scientist, you, you really have to do that because that's the only way, being methodical about it is really the only way to know that you left no stone unturned and really looked at this thing every possible way. And that's really what you have to do to become the best at something. If you're playing a piece, for example, as a classical musician, my approach is, has usually been, if I'm playing a piece and then there's this one moment in the piece that trips me up, but the rest of it I'm playing fine, I'm not going to waste time in the day by playing the piece over and over again, because 75% of it I already have down and I don't want to waste the time playing it. So I'll just focus on that one part of the piece that I am not doing well. And then I'll look at that thing every possible way. So I'll slow it down. I'll, I'll practice extremely slowly. And I think that slow practice is absolutely crucial. We'll play it really slowly. I'll play it at a really quiet dynamic. I'll play it at a really loud dynamic. I'll change the rhythm of it. Instead of just being a straight rhythm, I'll change it to like a long short pattern and then to a short long pattern and then to a triplet pattern. I'll just kind of mess with the rhythm of it. And then I'll do whatever. And you could play it backwards if you want. You can kind of you can come up with your own ways, whatever makes sense for you, but it's really just about being totally meticulous about how you approach learning. And it's important to just be strategic, really, I think, about your use of time, because that's really the most valuable thing we have. So you have to be smart about how you use your time. And I think that it's almost like a different hat that you have to put on, because we're artists in the one sense. An art is totally intuitive and totally free, but then I think you also need to be able to sometimes become, like I said, almost a scientist who is totally based in logic and looking at this thing and studying it. So yeah, I guess that's that's what I would say to my, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I would say to my. my well, that's good. <laughs> that's really good. I especially love where you're talking about slowing everything down because I, I yeah. always talk a lot about that too. It's really important to mess around with things. and. Yeah. So what are your goals? Like, where do you see yourself in the next five to 10 years? What would you really most like to be doing? Do you want to be the next John Williams? I mean, I would, I would absolutely love that. But I guess I've started to see things a little bit differently in the sense that I think I've become a little bit less goal oriented, which may sound like a bad thing. But I think that what that's really come from for me is just realizing that, like I was saying before, that you don't always know where you're going to end up. And my approach now is more just kind of following my truth, following whatever I'm being called to do and letting that happen and, and not really having any expectations. I believe in working hard, of course, and, and putting in the time. But I think for me, I feel like my future is open and, and that's a very exciting thing. I mean, I'm definitely going to continue to compose. I would also love to just produce music more and I would love to start making songs or something, which is something I've never done before. But it's something that excites me. The, the idea of it is interesting. I haven't really gone that much down that path so far, but again, it's We'll see where it takes me. That's that's kind of the fun of it. Well, it has been an incredible ride and an incredible journey. And I, I have been honored to have watched you go through this. And I'm very grateful that you would take time out of your schedule to be with us. So Tim, thank you so, so much. I'm sending you virtual hugs. Absolutely. Thank <laughs> you so much. And best of luck to everyone you guys are just Thank smiling. you.
so incredible. I'm so happy to be part of it. Thank you again. And thank you all for joining us and have a great day. Okay, people, that's a wrap. But while you're still here, hit and like those subscribe buttons and talk to us in the comments below about what other performing arts training topics you'd like us to cover. You might just see your suggestions in a future episode. You never know. Learn more about the Spotlight program at the Music Center offstage at our website, musiccenter.org. Thanks for watching.